Hello everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and this will be a review of Superman and Lois Season 1 finale titled Last Sons of Krypton. Now there will be spoilers in this review here so if you haven't watched the episode yet I advise you to go away, catch up with the episode and then come back to this overall review. Now just to recap on the previous episode we saw that Morgan Edge who was Tal Rao has now been converted into the Eradicator, he collects together four civilians turning them into super powered beings and they have a spectacular battle against superman and Titans in metropolis lois continues to clash with her dad about telling the small four residents about what's happening and when they eventually reveal to them about the current events it causes a lot of unrest within the town community problems arose even further when chrissy reveals that she'll have to sell the gazette because she's running out of money and we also get the climatic act when the Eradicator intercepts Sam and the boys trying to escape. He captures Jordan and fuses his father consciousness inside him. Now in terms of this episode itself, I simply have to say this was a very strong finale. We had lots of spectacle, action, good effects, but it also hit a lot of those emotional beats and tones that we've really seen throughout the whole entire series itself. We got a good enough sense of high stakes and jeopardy and danger and we had lots of dramatic moments and tension. Now they really did pack a lot into this episode and there were times where it did feel a bit rushed. Some scenes could have been a bit extended, a bit more prolonged. Maybe things were rounded off a bit too quickly. But I think as an entire season finale and I always hold this standard in terms of what a season finale should do. In terms of giving you lots of excitement, lots of action. I think this episode did more than enough. So we're going to go over the standout elements of this particular episode. So we started off the episode with Superman and Irons trying to locate Edge and Jordan. This is obviously a very emotional moment for them and Lois was looking very angry and crestfallen as well. And Superman was trying to listen all over the town but still had no idea of where they were. We saw later on that Lana and Carl had managed to locate Sam and Jonathan, who of course were injured in the car crash, and they brought them back to Smallville. Lois later on interrogated Lara about Jordan's whereabouts, but to no avail. And we saw later on scenes of the Smallville residents continuing to grow restless and protesting in front of the DOD as well. So there was a lot of pressure, as we saw Sam later on coming back to the main base and really just trying to get a grip on how exactly to contain this overall situation. We had some great scenes and effects as we see Superman flying around the planet, listening and calling out to Jordan. We see him flying all throughout the various cities, and then he flies into space. This was a scene that we saw a lot throughout the entire series. And then Jordan calls out to him, and then he eventually meets up with him. Amongst this very fiery pit that we see on here and obviously it was a trap because we all know that Jordan was under the influence of the Eradicator's father and to be honest I wasn't convinced about the voiceover overall it felt a bit hokey they were going for this very deep kind of intense sounding evil voice but it didn't quite work in terms of the sync in with Jordan himself it just felt a bit hokey in my opinion it wasn't enough to derail from the quality of the episode but I just feel they could have just dulled it back a little bit you know we get it he's a very strong Kryptonian he's very much of an evil force inside of Jordan but they just could have dialed down the voice a little bit and then we see that Superman and Jordan fight as Jordan struggles to fight back against the influence we later on get a great scene where we see the Eradicator encountering the residents within Smallville and Irons and the DOD try to take him out. We had some really good effects as the Eradicator converts certain amount of the soldiers into his superpowered beings. We see later on that Superman and Irons and Sam and Lois, they come together along with the DOD in order to plan to evacuate Smallville. We see also Kyle and Lana helping. So this episode did a really good job of just keeping all of the characters involved. I think something that has failed a lot of the CW shows in terms of their finale episodes is that we get the main plot and then too often we keep venturing off into these side plots, these B plot characters. And it takes away a lot of the sense and the urgency away from the episode. But what this finale did so well was just keeping everybody integral to the story. Everybody felt that they had a really important role in terms of the overall events. We later on had a discussion between Superman and Lois where she essentially thinks that she can infiltrate Jordan's mind and his memories in order to trigger him out of the influence. Again, I was a bit confused by that. It didn't quite completely work for me overall in terms of the concept or the execution. We later on catch up with both Jonathan and Irons as he constructs a hammer in order to be able to disable 
the forces within Jordan and then bring him back. We see later on the Eradicator come through to the main mineral reserve of the Kryptonite X, I think they was calling it, or the, the essentially the Yellow Kryptonite. At this point, we're asking what is exactly his plan. And then we get another great sequence where we see Superman and Irons flying off in the sky to face off against the other DoD soldiers. And I love the music as they stand off against each other. We get that great facing off between Superman and Irons and the other soldiers. And then we get a quick fight scene. And this is one of the elements that I would have preferred to see extended, you know, we all renowned the show for having a bigger budget than the normal CW shows and I think in this finale episode we could have had a much more of a prolonged fight sequence between Superman Irons and the DoD soldiers. Irons uses the hammer to bring Jordan back to the farm while Superman fights off against the soldiers again. We get another great scene where we see them all zooming off and flying into the sky. We had another great spectacular sequence where we see Morgan Edge forming together a huge energy wave amongst the kryptonite and then he starts essentially carpet bombing smallville and we get some great visuals that we see the residents falling away we see a lot of the buildings on fire and all of the civilians running for cover again building up that sense of dread and suspense and tension and it was great you really felt for all of the civilians as they were running away again so great to see a show that is able to compel you in terms of the overall danger and peril we then cut to the next sequence where we see Lois infiltrating Jordan's mind and going through his memories he sees the scenes between the Eradicator and his father and she essentially tries to wrestle control from Jonathan we get these huge outbursts of emotion from Lois and then she sees Jordan in the room later on now this is one of the scenes that I felt was a bit rushed I think they could have handled it a bit better we had all of this emotive music and we had all of these quick jump cuts and quick edits and it didn't quite resonate as what it should have done I think had this episode been a bit longer we could have had much more of a structured passage of events where we see Lois infiltrating his memories and then slowly trying to bring him back overall so I just feel that was probably one of the weaker moments of this entire episode but they managed to basically recover Jordan from the evil influence and then we go back to the main battle and we get another great wave of effects as Superman flies off into space alongside Irons, they formulate their plan together and then we see Superman flies straight down on the earth at super speed and we see all of the energy and the atmosphere and the red and yellow energy as Superman is flying headfirst into Morgan Edge. Fantastic effects here as Irons is reconfiguring the hammer in space. Now this was a bit unconvincing I would say he's got to fly straight into space and then he throws the hammer as Superman zooms in behind Morgan Edge and then the hammer essentially flies into Morgan Edge I think they could have done this a bit better I don't think they needed them both to be in outer space I understand they were going for a real epic spectacular moment and it looked visually very great but I think it could have been handled a lot better I would have preferred if this was much more of a grounded battle or maybe it was Superman who was fighting with Eradicator and then he was holding him back and then Jeremy Irons had to strike down with the hammer through. I think that would have been a far more better way of staging the offence. But anyway, it was still a spectacular and epic run of events. And then Morgan Edge is defeated. And this is when I thought things were a bit of a rushed feel towards it. Nothing wrong with how the events played out, but I just kind of got that feeling where we could have perhaps had this as a two-parter we know so many of the cw shows where basically the season finale is a two-parter where we have a cliffhanger moment and then that's what leaves us all tense and in anticipation for the next season and i think this episode could have done a bit better of that smallville begins to recover and rebuild itself and then we get to for me was probably one of the best standout scenes not only in this episode but also in the entire series where superman gives an interview to chrissy and basically he's doing what superman should do he's explaining to the world what happened in terms of morgan edge he's explaining that morgan edge was indeed kryptonian and he makes reference to the fact that yes because he's kryptonian as well people may carry the same fears to us towards superman as what they have done with the experience of morgan edge and there's a great line that he says something along the lines of i can't control what people feel or what people experience in terms of their fear and that's what superman would say and it's a great moment and just quickly we've had all of these doubts and skepticism when tyler hecklin first appeared in the arrowverse as superman but 
he has convinced us throughout this series and in this scene alone if you had any remaining doubts about whether he is a great superman this scene alone convinced you all he's forthcoming he's open he's appealing to everybody and he's addressing the world's concerns and this is what superman should be you know i've commented so much about the flaws within the snyder version that's the superman who runs away from his problems it's a burden to him to be the earth's protector but in this scene Tyler Hetchlin really convinced us that Superman should be out in the open and talking to us and communicating with us and it was a fantastic scene the suit has very much improved they've managed to adjust the padding a lot better with his overall physique and just give you that convincing image and embodiment of what Superman should be it was a fantastic scene and then we get basically to the ending of the finale where everybody's happy they're all celebrating Carl is making a barbecue everybody's recovering now from the events in Smallville and we see that Lois has managed to generate enough money to buy half of the Gazette from Chrissy essentially so they can keep that in Smallville so that all makes sense we saw that Sam is stepping down from the DOD in order to stay closer to his family I'm not sure how much he's going to stay there because I really like Sam as a character a lot they really convinced us that he really is concerned about his family so i think he will stay out of the dod for a while but maybe there'll be a big event that will cause him to rejoin the ranks overall maybe eventually we'll see john taken over the dod we'll kind of get a similar dynamic as what we had with supergirl where another john and who's black as well so coincidentally he took over the deo so maybe we'll see john irons take more participation in a dod as well and then we just got a lot of little small emotional moments we had clark visiting the fortress again retaining the last remnants of the kryptonite and then we see the family shot together again when they're all standing and then basically they're having this kind of funeral sequence all nicely done well handled good music overall so very rounded off nicely in terms of the overall episode and then we get the final cliffhanger moment if it was so where we basically see the arrival of john's daughter she's come back from their earth we assume that she was building whatever technology she had to build and she wanted to go and find her father and then she looks at lois and basically calls her mum. now it wasn't really a cliffhanger moment for me as such and it was a bit confusing because the daughter knew the plan and she knows that she's going to another parallel earth so why would she call Lois her mother when she knows that this version of Lois isn't her mother right because she obviously knows that her mother was destroyed in their own world so I'm not quite sure what they were hinting at or what they were going for in terms of having her arrival it does bring up some sort of interesting elements that we will see play out through season two and I suppose they did that in a way to cement john's involvement within the show as well because he can't just be this constant loner they need another family member to bounce off and i suppose again it adds a bit more to the diversity of the cast having his daughter involved as well so i think that's what they were going for so a bit of a odd moment i think to end the episode but overall in terms of the finale itself spectacular action-packed exciting but real strong compelling storyline lots of tension and suspense and great effects for the most part a few rushed elements but i think overall as a satisfactory finale episode you can't really complain too much so an epic conclusion for what has been an outstanding series and i will of course as what i do with all of these shows provide very shortly an overall review of the season of superman as lois as well so fantastic finale and in tyler hetchelin no doubt about it we have a great superman and i think warner brothers really needs to take note they really don't have a clue and handle the character and I think what they should do is watch this show and they would have a further understanding on how Superman should be handled in the right way overall. So those are my thoughts and feelings and review on Superman and Lois, the season one finale. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As I mentioned before, I will do an overall review of the first season as well and look out for that in the next couple of days. But let me know your thoughts and feelings on this show and how you think it compares to the other CW shows and also as I mentioned before, should WB really take notes from the show and start taking the character seriously again and get further to grips to whatever crazy plans they've got in terms of the character going forward? So let me know what you think in the comments below. Please also hit and like those subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves, stay in safe distances, and I will see you very, very soon.